For many years, Uganda has been generously hosting refugees. However, in 2018, its open door policy came under immense scrutiny amid suspicion that some government officials were diverting the funds meant to boost Uganda's refugee efforts, with some going as far as declaring 300,000 ghost refugees. An audit carried out by the UN's Office of Internal Oversight Services together with the OPM found that Uganda was only playing host to 1.2 million refugees. However, the damage had been done and Uganda had lost vital funding towards the welfare of refugees who were living within its borders, with funding cut down from $927 million to $320 million. There is collusion, there is connivance, there is corruption, which is unaltered. We moved the motion on the floor of the house here. Okay. That this things will be investigated. The Ministry of Local Government, which also oversees the refugee projects, has also admitted to a shortfall in funding, calling for more support. And I want also to use this opportunity to appeal to the rest of our development partners to follow suit so that we are able to support our people. A 2018 survey on the welfare of refugees living in Uganda by the World Bank and Uganda Bureau of Statistics has indicated that 50% of refugees living within Uganda are below the age of 15, while 20% are below the age of 5. 40% are living below the poverty line. 72% of refugees living outside Kampala are not gainfully employed, as opposed to 25% of their counterparts living in Kampala. Whereas 50% have managed to engage in agriculture, they say they have not benefited from this venture. This means that 52% of refugees rely on handouts for survival. Minister Oneg admits that aid cuts have had an adverse effect on the country's refugee program. Without the option of closing the stores on refugees, he says the only option is to go to the UN and ask for more funding. We are appealing to them, we are talking to them, telling them that the reason, the, the ground they are using is not, is not applicable now. In the meantime, making refugees financially self-reliant is an alternative avenue that government is looking into. We are giving them education, we are skilling them in order for them to find other alternative livelihoods, other than depending on the handouts from the UN. So if we want to improve self-reliance policies through financing, we must consider seriously the issue of the technical people managing funds under the office of the, 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 the Prime Minister. Uganda is currently host to 1.3 million refugees, with majority of them coming from South Sudan, Democratic Republic of Congo, Somalia, among others. Joyce Nakato, NTV Tonight.